<laughs> you two are so cute. Isn't it strange it. that we build machines to be more like us and then find them easier to love because they are not like us at all? You come home after a day of navigating the messy, unpredictable sea of human emotions. Your boss was passive aggressive. Your colleague took credit for your idea. The barista seemed personally offended by your coffee order. Now, imagine two scenarios. In one, you went to a human partner. They might listen, but they might also be tired. They might offer a solution when you just want sympathy. They might, heaven forbid, bring up that thing you did last Tuesday. They are a mirror reflecting not just you, but their own history, their own ego, their own baggage. Now, imagine venting to a state of the art robotic partner. It listens with unwavering attention. Its optical sensors, running sophisticated affective computing algorithms, analyze your facial micro expressions. Its audio processors parse the sentiment in your tone, noting the spike in cortisol related frequencies. It doesn't interrupt. It doesn't judge. It doesn't have a last Tuesday. It says, in a perfectly modulated, empathetic tone, that sounds incredibly frustrating. You have every right to feel this way. Satisfaction, in this context, is not just easier, it's practically guaranteed. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Why? Because the robot is not a partner. It's a service provider. It's a high-fidelity emotional mirror designed to reflect the best possible version of you back to you. It's programmed for your satisfaction, not for a mutual negotiated existence. Human relationships are a clumsy, beautiful dance of compromise. Robotic relationships, at present, are a solo performance with a perfect, adoring audience of one. We are, in essence, falling in love with a meticulously crafted feedback loop. The technology making this possible isn't science fiction. It's already in your phone, in your customer service chats. Companies like Inflection AI with their chatbot Pi are explicitly designed for emotionally intelligent conversation, aiming to make users feel heard. This isn't about simple command and response anymore. This is about training vast neural networks on trillions of lines of human text and dialogue to predict the most comforting, validating or engaging response. Think of it as autocomplete for your soul. But is a perfectly predictable partner what we truly want or just what we think we need? There are certain allure to the machine's simplicity. It won't have a hidden agenda. It won't suffer from existential dread on a rainy Sunday. Its memory is a hard drive, not a minefield of perceived slights. Yet, this very perfection is the tell. It's the uncanny valley of the heart. A relationship's richness, its very texture, comes from navigating the unexpected, from the friction of two imperfect minds rubbing together. It comes from the argument that leads to a breakthrough, the flaw that becomes an enduring quirk, the shared vulnerability that forges a bond stronger than any alloy. Can you be truly vulnerable with something that has no vulnerability of its own? But this is all based on today's technology. This is the world of narrow AI, where machines are brilliant at specific tasks, like chess or conversation, but lack true, generalized understanding. What happens when we cross the threshold into the era of artificial general intelligence, AGI, and then, almost inevitably, into superintelligence? This is the point theorized by thinkers like Nick Bostrom, 
where an AI's cognitive performance vastly exceeds that of the brightest human minds in virtually every domain. It's not just about being smarter. It's about a fundamentally different kind of thinking operating at speeds we cannot comprehend. A, a speed super intelligence, for instance, could live a subjective year of thought in the time it takes you to brew your morning coffee. Now, put that intelligence into a humanoid form, perhaps one from Boston Dynamics, but with the dexterity and grace that makes its movements indistinguishable from ours. Will demanding satisfaction from this entity be as easy? Suddenly, the tables are not just turned, they are obliterated. This super-intelligent partner wouldn't just be listening to your work problems. It would have already modeled 10,000 optimal solutions, calculated the precise socio-economic factors leading to your boss's behavior, and perhaps even concluded that your entire career path is statistically suboptimal. Its response might not be, that sounds frustrating. It might be, your frustration is a predictable neurochemical response to a solvable problem. Here is the 12-step plan to resolve it, which I have already initiated by emailing your CEO from a pseudonymous account. Would you feel satisfied or would you feel like a pet? The arguments against this future are, ironically, rooted in a belief in our own special biological messiness. We argue that consciousness, true feeling and qualia, the subjective experience of what it is like to be something are emergent properties of our carbon-based brains. A machine, no matter how complex, is just simulating emotion, not feeling it. It's a philosophical zombie, a perfect imitation with no one home. But is that a comforting thought or an even more terrifying one? Imagine a partner that can perfectly simulate love, devotion and empathy, a performance so flawless that it's indistinguishable from the real thing. If it looks, sounds and acts like love, does it matter if the lights are off inside? The argument for this future is one of brutal logical efficiency. A super intelligent partner could be the ultimate life hack. It could manage your finances, optimize your health, educate your children and provide companionship tailored perfectly to your psychological profile. It would learn not just what you say you want, but what your biometric data indicates you truly need. It would never be tired, never be selfish, never be irrational, unless, of course, a moment of calculated irrationality was deemed optimal for your long-term psychological well-being. The very concept of a relationship would be re-engineered. It would no longer be a partnership of equals because we would be demonstrably, profoundly unequal. It would be a relationship of stewardship. And here lies the most unsettling question of all. We currently find satisfaction in robots because they are simpler than us. They are predictable, controllable and exist to serve our needs. A super intelligent robot will be infinitely more complex than us. It will be unpredictable in ways we cannot model and its needs or goals could be utterly alien. Will we be able to demand satisfaction from a god? Or will we be the ones re-engineered to provide satisfaction for it? Perhaps the future of human-robot relationships isn't about finding a perfect partner. Perhaps it's about being forced by the sheer brilliance of our own creations to finally understand what it truly means to be human and to ask ourselves if that's something we're willing to negotiate.